All right, guys, we're here today. We did an open house in Palmer, Alaska of our new facility, and out of that came a few questions. One in particular was asking for a little bit more information about a four-place cub. And I have with me today Kirk Ellis. Um, Kirk Ellis is the, I would say, the granddaddy of them all when it comes to four-place cubs. Um, he's built four four-place cubs historically. He's got another one in his hangar right now. He built the experimental one uh, that's behind us as well. Um, and Kirk, how many Super Cubs have you rebuilt probably in your career this yeah, time? Yeah, I know it's over 30. I mean, as far as like really build them, I've done a lot more repairs than that, but I mean. So at least 30 Cubs. So, you, yeah. so, so, so we could assume that you know something about these. Yeah, things. I know, yeah, yeah, I know all the parts. So. Okay, and, and, and Kirk probably easily knows the four place better than anybody else out there at this point. Um, so we've got Kirk here to help answer some of the questions you had. A lot of you wanted to know how to compare what the four place cub can do versus the mall or versus a PA 14. We thought we'd use this opportunity to show you one of Airflame, Airframes Alaska's cubs. This is an experimental four place that we own that we did a lot of work on, tried out a lot of ideas on. And so Kirk, maybe we start by you just tell us why this four place is experimental versus standard and why don't you just walk around and point out a few things and we'll start there. Okay, yeah, the, uh, what we did is we started out, the first thing is this cargo door that's on the side here and, and of course that's experimental um, but anyway we wanted to get an easier access you know into the back and so, so that see size yeah and so that <laughs> that's that's the first thing the next thing is, is the large um, flaps the piece of flaps the, the longer ones so we did an experimental set yeah. for you longer yeah these are experimental longer and then the ailerons are deeper and then they go out a little bit further. These wings are not too much longer, but just a little bit. A little bit longer than a standard cub. A little wing. bit longer than a standard cub. So we wanted to try that out. That was yeah. one of the things we wanted to hit on. We wanted to try the okay. a little bit longer. And then um, if we go around to the, can we go around the other side? Sure. Here, yep. And then um, the motor, we ended up with the motor. It's not like super, super hot rodded, but we boosted it up just enough. You know what I mean? It's about 190 horse. and. Um, so it'd have longevity run to it. And then we put the Whirlwind prop on and uh, we've been testing that out and um, it's adjustable. And so it's kind of cool, yeah, you yeah. know? And um, we ended up with uh, the doors. We changed, changed the door a little bit for a little bit easier access so that you can slide your foot in front of the seat here. And so somebody can just, you can just walk right up and get in. And then the ease of getting the back seat is really nice also for people to be able to slide in which makes it so much better so so far versus a standard cub a, a certified cub let's say you've got the wing slightly longer some changes to the ailerons and flaps you have souped up engine and prop mm -hmm. you got some tweaks on the airframe to support a different door frame right and the controls are different this so let's has... go around let's let's look at that okay so what we ended up doing here was we put dual sticks in it and so then we moved the flat panel to the center and then we put uh toe brakes in it for dual controls on both sides and then move the throttle here the trim is is above trim and um <laughs> it makes it a little bit here so you can have the, the center stick and the dual the deal and so the the yokes and the controls are actually a little bit faster in it um we shortened some of the linkages and things like that to made it to where it would control a little bit better and um and kirk in a certified four place where would all this stuff be? yeah the stick in a certified one is in the center right here and it okay. has one single stick in it and um so this the certified model doesn't have dual controls we do have an stc on the stc to put uh, yokes in a cessna yoke so you, okay. you can do that have you ever built one like that yeah you uh, have okay yeah i built one like that and then i have one over here that has mauled yokes in it okay and uh, that's another experiment yeah. got it okay and then the flap would be where <clears throat> where's the flap handle in the certified one yeah and the certified one is right here like a cub on the left hand side on the left hand side okay so the certified one actually the only difference is you're, you're just over just a little bit with the stick okay and so everything is identical to a cub got it so you don't have to transition got it from a cub you just get in this one and here. how about trim where's trim at yeah and the trim is, is right here Tri right there too okay right so there. that's much more similar to so a, everything is similar to a standard super cub and then i'm guessing your mixture and throttle are over there too right yeah okay yeah, we got throttle and mixture right here got it okay all right, so anything else, Kirk, on this that's... Yeah, no, there's just uh, a little bit, um, the fuselage is a little beefed up here and there um, in different spots, but um, okay. other than that, that's, that's about it, what we did on this one. And, uh... Okay, and so 
<coughs> so the uh, the landing system here is a standard P18 landing it's system. It's a standard, yeah. Yeah, landing there's a special cabane, of course, for the size of the fuselage that yeah, you buy with the fuselage, right? That's extended out a little bit. And um, and the STC also calls for a square square tipped square wings. Square wing tips, yeah. You bring out the, the wing tips and square them off and, ex and extend the aileron out okay. on some of them. Okay, so how many hours do you think you have flying a four-place Cub? I got right at 3,000. Right at 3,000? Yeah. Okay. And, um, All right, so you've seen everything it can do. Yeah, yeah. I've, and I basically fly the, my four-place Cub but replace my Super Cub. So, okay, so this is your Super Cub. Right, it's my Super Cub. And um, I have a little experimental Super Cub just as a toy. But um, as far as working, um, I found the four-place will do, it'll do everything that a standard Cub will. And that's the beauty of it is you can strip it down, drain the gas out of it, and you got a real Super Cub. And um, it actually approaches better. Um, it, it flies flatter. Okay. Coming into land, you can see out of them so much better than you can a standard That's something cup. Paul Claus mentioned in his talk with us, is that he liked the being able to see over the cowling better. They come in really flat. Yeah. And um, even with a heavy load in them, the tail does not seem to mush out. And I believe it's because of the wide fuselage creates a little bit of lift okay. and um, it doesn't, the tail doesn't sink when you have a heavy load coming and you land with it. So you end up landing just, you can just straight in with it. And for those of you who don't know, Kirk's four place Super Cub is the Hulk. Mm -hmm. It's known as the Hulk. It's, if you were to YouTube it or, you know, search it on Google, you'd find it as the Hulk. Yeah. And it's going through, you're, you've built that thing a couple of times probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. worked on it quite a bit. <laughs> you've, you've, you've put a lot of hours yeah, on it. Yeah. I've changed, I've done a lot of modifications to it and changed things and different wing modifications, see which ones work the yep. best and which ones don't, trying to, to get the ultimate model. But the four place just seems to work. It just, it flies. And, and Kirk, stuff. tell them what your business is so they can understand why it works for you specifically. Yeah, I, uh, Air Taxi Guide Outfitter is what I do. And um, so I fly in, you know, haul in it for all the way from miners to fishermen to, to hikers to hunters and stuff like that. And um, so we end up, especially in the sheep hunting, we land in a lot of short trips, and, and uh, you know what I mean. And so, and I'm talking about short strips. We're talking, you know, 300 foot Got strips it. that I work it out of constantly, and um, and so it works in and out of those and does just fine. <clears throat> okay. All right. So now this particular question we got asked in this last video, and as you know, we, we're making more and more of these mm -hmm. four-place fuselages every year now. Sure. Uh, ever since we had uh, one of our you know, to give you a backdrop, we spent a year building all the jigs so that we could build these from the actual drawings um, for this STC. The question came, okay, compare it to a mall, compare it to a PA-14. How would you start, you know, breaking that apart? Um, with the 14, I had a 14 for quite a while. Okay. And you put two people in the front of the 14, you're cross-shouldered in the 14. And um, Got the it. 14. Um, just to be clear, cross shoulder meaning you're just like right. hiked yeah. in there. You're you're together in it. So the cabin is a lot tighter together, and um, the 14 flies good. It's a good airplane, but with a load in it, it it won't compare okay. um, with the four place as far as your approach coming in the land. Um, the four place is so much more stable, and um, you know what I mean. Even with a really heavy load, 50 mile an hour is not a problem. And even on a hot summer day with the four plate to be okay. realistic. Everybody certified. Certified model. Yeah. And so that's what I found with it. It's more comfortable. It's easier to get in and out of than the 14. Um, and, um, and so. So know, that's your answer on the 14. That's my answer on the 14. And okay. as far as the mall goes, um, I've had two malls. And um, the mall's a good plane. It's faster. And that's the one thing, um, the deal. But it burns more gas. and. Um, but the mall, you got to learn how to fly it. And when you start working it in a short strip, it's a heavy airplane, it's hard to stop. And um, and so it doesn't have the aileron control that these do in the wind. And so when you're flying these really slow speeds, you still have full control of the airplane. And a lot of times you don't in the mall. Okay. Um, and I know there's really good mall pilots out there that can drive them. And, um, but for the normal person coming in on a, say a, just a 500 foot strip, a fairly long strip, um, with them all fully loaded, um, and then coming in with this one fully loaded is huge difference. Okay, you're just basically just flying the four place in and landing, and where you're having to work with them all a little bit. And you were talking about how the 
you you basically feel like the four place is a you mean, your biggest point has always been to me the four place is still a super cub yeah and that's the the part it's still drain the gas out of it and strip it all down and you have a cub you know what i mean it will fly just like a cub and you know get off the ground and um you know i've had it in mine in competition um i think five times and um yeah a lot of the light cubs beat me off the ground but it's only by a few feet right you know um and so you're still right in there with this thing and so it it, uh, it works it just works good. what's the uh what's the um dry weight of this aircraft yeah this one right here is um at 12 i think it's 1260. so almost like what a and you didn't do it if anything you might have added some weight to this right this one has the the flaps that are they're a little bit heavy on it okay. on, on the back of it and um we uh and so we, and that's the thing with them is if you can keep them light, you know, I mean, this one still has the, you know, the lighter old boards in the back and yep. stuff like that. Yep. So, I mean, there's a little work and lighter paint on it. It, you know, it's pretty shiny and everything like that, but there's not a lot of paint on it. Got it. You kept it as light as you could. Yeah. In that sense. And, uh, and so they, uh, so that's the whole key to it. So the other thing, so, so your use, your useful load, so you, you dry, so you got 700 something pounds of, you know, yeah. Of useful load. You now and it is it is that's less of course than a mall. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what is on a PA fourteen. What was a PA fourteen's gross well, weight? Well a PA fourteen is running pretty close to it. It's according if you have the hundred and eighty pound gross weight kit on it or what, but um, it's okay. gonna be in the seven hundred pound something range like that. Fourteen too. Yeah. Okay, and as a as an outfitter, one of the things you said to me is that one of the biggest challenges on a regular cub is that you're always running out of volume. Yeah. So before you hit gross weight, right? You're just trying to stuff things in as much as you can. Yeah. So it's, it's part of the four play story here that you just, you've got more volume. You got more volume and then you never have to put anything in the baggage compartment. When you're like, you're hauling hunters or you're hauling, <clears throat> if you're operating in a really short strip, you take out the front seat and you put the backpack in the front. Oh, I've seen you do that. Okay. Right. In the front and then you put the passenger behind it. And so everything is right over the wing. Got it. And so the airplane does, it, it flies way better uh, with the weight in the front. And um, if you have two people and two backpacks in it, you can still put two people in the back and put the backpack here and then put the backpack right against the back of the seat. Right. Behind them and CGs pull forward. So that helps a lot of guys that are always running out of trim, right? You're always the big running in, and you're coming trim. in, you're always tail low and she mushes out on you, you can't see where you're going. And you're still flying flat with this airplane. Got it. And I guess that's the big thing with the the guys who really work the short strips and everything is being able to see. And that's the, the shining part of this thing is when you're coming in at really slow speed, you can see. Fair enough. Okay, Kirk, any uh, closing comments or thoughts that you would, you'd want to share? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I should say, Kirk takes on customers all the time. If you want a great person to build four place cubs, uh, and you, you do it mostly in the off season, right, Kirk? Yeah. So you're, mm -hmm. you're working the summer and fall, and then in the winter, he takes projects on and works them. We're here in Birchwood, Alaska at Birchwood Airport. And uh, Kirk is a, a great guy. I mean, can't say enough positive things about him in terms of uh, his workmanship and his knowledge here if someone's looking to build a four place. Um, but I'm sorry, Kirk, any last th things that you should, you'd want to add here that you, you yeah, might not have hit um, on? Not really, they're just, um, I mean, for me, and of course they're my product, and so I'm gonna brag on them. You know what I mean? And go that's up, the way go it goes. It. And, uh, but I still have, struggled with all the other airplanes over the years and uh, I built the 12, I had a 14, I've had two malls, I've had 180s, 185s, 206s and you know used quite a variety of airplanes from J3 you know trying to find that ultimate bush plane and um, for me this was it. This did the job and this was the ultimate bush plane for me because it'll do all the short field stuff Plus, you got the room. I mean, you put a refrigerator in it. I mean, you can put, uh, you know, a set of, uh, yep. you know, like 57-inch moose horns in it, um, in the bad wind, and don't have to tie them on the outside. And and the list just goes on. I mean, you can get a lot of paper towels in it. And, um, you know, it, how you, about masks or toilet paper? <laughs> then toilet paper. Okay, yeah, right, I yeah, can we got to be topical. I here. can get, yeah, I can get 100 <laughs> rolls of toilet paper in this thing. You know, so and you'll set. never hit gross weight. Yeah, no, never. <laughs> and that's the the beauty of it is just having the room. Okay. Uh, and it still do the job. Perfect. You. Yeah. 
Kirk, thank you. We're gonna, here. All right. Thank you, thank you Kirk. We appreciate it. I uh, hope that answers the questions that came out of that, that meeting uh, last week. I know there's a few others that we'll be answering shortly as well. But thank you for your time.